Hi everybody, Joshua here with the Heavy Piano YouTube channel. Uh, the piano you see in a lot of my videos is a Baldwin 243 upright piano. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me questions about it and if I would recommend it as a, uh, a piano to look for or try to find a used one. And so I wanted to put together a uh, little buyer's guide um, so for some things to look out for and um, just some history about the model of the piano. The Baldwin 243 has been around since about 1939. Uh, mine is from the early 80s. I paid around $800 for it in 2003. So um, Baldwin Hamilton, Baldwin's been around a long time. Um, they were bought by Gibson in 2001 after Baldwin filed for bankruptcy. Um, they laid off some workers in the American plant in 2005 and quit making pianos completely in 2008. So any piano newer than 2008 or mid 2000s is probably made in their factories in China. So. The company is not the exact same company. Um, I do think they've kind of copied the model design over to the pianos that they're now making. But um, just remember that too when we're looking at my model, which is from the early 80s, or even older models from you know 40s, 50s, 60s. Um, I don't know if I'd recommend looking at pianos that old. Um, but just there will be some differences between the generations of the piano. So. Most of these pianos were sold for institutional use. Um, one thing to look for is uh, if it seems like there's some signs of abuse from the piano. It may have not been treated super well if it was at a school or um, you know a church maybe with temperature or humidity fluctuations. Um, I was able to purchase mine from a private seller. Um, I would recommend going that way. And it, now it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing if, it, if you buy it from a school or from a, a church or anything, but just something to be aware of. Um, the first thing you want to do is open the top of the lid. On mine, uh, in the older versions, they, the whole piece opens up um, and it has a prop that keeps it open. But um, I've seen some of the newer ones, probably from the 90s on, they have the typical, the lid opens just, just the very top. So you'll want to find the serial number to determine the age of the piano. I'll put some links in the description of uh, some places you can look. You can also just Google piano serial number. Um, some companies like Yamaha, Kawai, uh, there's some other ones, they have their own websites to check serial numbers, and I'll put those links below as well. Um, the reason I mentioned finding the serial number to determine the age of the piano, it's very important. Uh, mechanical objects don't get better with age in general. Um, over time, the felt and leather parts uh, compress, and uh, the wood expands and contracts over time, again, due to humidity and temperature changes. So. Uh, especially in a piano when we're talking about things like the soundboard or the pin block as the wood expands and contracts um, the fibers in the wood. So especially in the pin block, the fibers in the wood are pressing into the metal um, and over time the fibers get compressed as the wood expands on, against the metal and so it, the pin loses its grip in the wood so it means the piano can only be tuned. So when looking for a used Baldwin 243, I would stick within 30 years old or so. I mean, if you can go a little bit newer, maybe that'd be better. Um, it just, you know, it's always a good idea too, to have a technician check out every, uh, all the components on it too. It's worth your time to make sure you don't buy a dud. Um, so one of the th first things I will do if I'm checking out piano, I'll see if all the notes play. Um, if anything sounds drastically out of tune or anything seems out of place, I'll check the hammers to see how deep the grooves are in the felt from being played. If the grooves are deep, that means it's been played a lot. Um, I'll check the hammer alignment, make sure there's no big gaps or anything. Uh, I'll check to see how level the keys themselves are. Um, if a piano's been played a lot, you'll see a little bit of a dip in the middle of the keyboard from the compression of the felt over time. It's good to, if you can, check the back of the piano for any soundboard cracks or signs of abuse or dirt or mold or filth or anything like that. Another place to check is the bottom panel on the front. Check again for cracks in the soundboard, and especially for cracks in the bridges. Um, it's a very difficult thing to repair an upright piano, and um, usually with the, with the value of the piano, it's not worth removing strings and fixing bridge cracks. I really like these upright pianos. Uh, I think they have a nice tone. Uh, they tend to stay in tune really well. The pin box is good, 
good shape. Favorite thing about this piano is the wide sheet music desk. On a lot of uprights, you'll just have a very short um, sheet music desk uh, holding place um, where you can maybe keep a book. But uh, on this, on my 243, you know, I can really spread out several books or several sheets of music if I want to. One thing I do want to point out, um, you know, I don't know what was going on in the factories when they were building these, but I, I have noticed poor attention to details in my version of this generation in the 80s. Um, there was some shoddy felt gluing. Um, there is some screws are hitting the strings near the tuning pins. Um, when I was replacing the hammer rest rail, uh, the, uh, Baldwin used a thinner felt cut on the hammer rest rail, and so I had to get a custom cut uh, felt strip. Um, the synthetic leather hardened over time. Um, I don't believe, I think they used this in the 70s and 80s. I don't believe they use this anymore in their newer pianos or in the very old pianos. But um, what it did is it created clicks when the jack returned to the hammer butt. Um, and it also doesn't allow for consistent checking between the back checks and the catchers. And uh, you can see me talk about that in another video. I'll, I'll also add that link below to check out how to replace those. Not a difficult repair, but it is somewhat time consuming. So overall, I really like these pianos. Um, I've helped some friends purchase some, keep an eye out for them on, on you know, like used places like in, in America, you have Craigslist. Um, I would not pay more than a thousand unless it's in really, really good shape and everything checks out. Um, these can be had for anywhere from, you know, a few hundred I've seen to around, like my version was 800 and, uh, you know, they need a little bit of work. So again, it's going to depend on your market, but I hope that gives you an idea of what to look out for in a used Baldwin 243. Um, if you have any questions, leave them below. I'll get back to you. Um, again, overall, it's a good, it's a good piano. Um, I like the tone. I like the way they play. They can be regulated decently. Um, not the most precise, you know, it's not like the most precise instrument in the world, but um, it is a really nice, warm sounding piano um, that, you know, with proper care can give you years of use, even a used one that you might find for a few hundred dollars. So thank you for watching. Uh, take care and uh, we'll catch you next time.